Martin is successful underwater photography. And also he's been doing a lot of work with Martin and Sheila with the Black Bream and Undulate Ray projects from the Dorset coast. And this latest um, project he's been working on was looking at the Messerschmitt, which they'd found in Kimmeridge Bay. And he'll sh tell you something about that, I believe. Yes? Yeah, yeah, that definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so crack on? Crack on, yep, excellent. Okay, let me just... Uh... Pick a screen to share. Uh, that's the one. Um, I also just turn my video off um, just in case that uh, upsets things. Okay, can everyone see that, right? Yep, that looks good to me. So I'm going to keep this um, fairly short because because time is ticking on. But it's it's really just. Um, it's a few slides to uh, to build on um, a lot of what John put over in, in his presentation um, about the potential for 3D photogrammetry and how it can be useful um, to record, you know, the different um, different habitats um, that we're we're looking at underwater. Um, so normally on the sea search form, um, you know, we're trying to represent. Um, the habitats we're, we're surveying either in a, a plan view, um, sometimes a side on profile, um, or maybe if, you, if you've got the time and um, fancy putting the effort in, you know, you might try and put a, a 3D drawing onto things. But um, in, the last, in the last few years, certainly the last five or six, um, 3D you know, uh, photogrammetry um, and the use of computers to build 3D models of what we're looking at has, has really come on leaps and bounds and, um, and offers a whole lot more potential for us, I feel, as as divers. And it's quite interesting tonight just to see how many people out there asking questions and giving presentations and the like are, are also looking at this. Um, so it's obviously got a lot of, um, of potential. Uh, oh, wrong way. So as I said, it's a relatively new technique. Um, and as, as, as John and Martin have um, touched upon, it does have its limitations. I mean, we can use it to capture small objects in, in great detail um, to you know, entire survey sites, but um, it is greatly aided if you've got good visibility um, and if we're avoiding things like kelp beds and huge shoals of fish and the like, which can really hamper your efforts. But if used well, then um, you can really capture the character of a site and I think that's that's what's key to us as, as sea searchers is, is describing the habitats that we're looking at accurately and, and reflecting their character. Um, and and as we touched on earlier as well, it, I think it has got the potential of being able to illustrate high level changes um, at a site. Not It's not going to work in every, um, every uh, situation, but certainly for some sites it can illustrate um, changes over time. Um, but it's also got this ability, I think, to give a greater engagement with the wider public um, and even the scientific community when you're giving presentations about where we've been surveying, where we've been working, they can then picture themselves there. So um, on land, photogrammetry is, is relatively easy. Um, we can use drones to capture, um, you know, really big wide areas and, and create 3D models of of, of buildings and, and the like, um, and even smaller objects. This is a um, a wooden beam from a, a, a shipwreck. I forget which one now, but um, Martin might remember we uh, did a short photogrammetry course last year, and um, this was our our test subject. And and when you're using a, a high resolution SLR camera, the detail that you can capture is phenomenal. And these are you know. Um, holes made by wood boring worms whilst it was underwater and the like and you can see all the grains in it and that is you know this is a part of a model built from you know a couple of hundred images um, and you capture that that detail so it's, it's a really useful technique um, I'm not going to make this a tutorial John's already covered loads of, of the basics um, but underwater what do we need to make it work well um, I think good viz is essential. Um, yes, it can work in poorer conditions and if you've got some really powerful video lights um, and you can get close up, um, perhaps over 
you know smaller scales it can really work but you'll see something at the end which i tried almost in the pitch black last summer which it's useful but it hasn't worked properly so so good vis and, and plenty of lights whether that's natural or um floodlit as it were is is key again non-moving subjects avoid kelp beds and big shoals of fish ideally use something with a fixed focal length um, an SLR camera with a, a, a prime lens or a zoom lens that isn't going to move um, whilst you're taking the photographs or um, as, as mentioned earlier a GoPro can can work really well compacts with zoom lenses I've not tried it but I'm told they can they can just ruin everything because all of the internal movements of the lenses make it difficult um, for the software um, to, to stitch the images together um, at the end of the day and you need a lot of overlap um, at least 60 you know 50 to 60 percent is is key um, so that the computer algorithms can spot the same points across all your images um, and stitch them together specialist software to do this um, agisoft is is kind of the market leader there are others out there um, but it's a, it's a really good one and, and so easy to use um, if I can use it, anyone can. Um, and good computing power. If you're building small models, you can get away with a, a powerful laptop. Um, if you're building models of entire dive sites or um, like Simon Brown's Thistlegorn model, then you know you're really needing a, a proper workstation or doing it on remote, you know, through remote servers and the like. Um, you can melt laptops if you if you overwork them um, with this with this software. Um, so I'm going to show you some of my early efforts um, from the last couple of years where I've had the opportunities to try this out. Um, some black bream nests, um, this plane wreck site that Lynn mentioned, um, and something on it at the end of the V12 engine block in a bit more detail, um, and a couple of pictures from the Fleet Lagoon which we've done with a, a drone. So we've been able to um, map the, the profile of, the, of, of Chesil Bank um, as well with um, drone overflights. Um, most of these subjects, um, save the um, Fleet Lagoon with the drone, really took very little time to photograph in the water um, and the time consuming stage is the image processing, particularly if you're doing it on a, on a home computer. Um, and then an example from this rocky reef in Pembrokeshire um, when it can go wrong. So I'm going to flick through just some uh, still images on the screen and then I'm going to switch through to the Sketchfab software and show you the, the models um, on, online. So um, Black Bream, um, those of you that don't know the Black Bream project, if you Google it um, you should come up with a couple of web hits and you can find out a bit more about it. But Black Bream are fish that nest along the, the south coast um, and a few other sites around the UK and they build these big nests maybe one or two meters across by ex excavating um, sand, gravel, pebbles, cobbles um, down to larger slabs of rock or bedrock um, onto which the, the female spawns her eggs and, um, and they can really create a kind of moonscape across the seabed um, and we, we photographed these in all different ways over the years but um, a couple of seasons back I decided to have a pop at photogrammetry of, of a couple of these nests um, and this one is probably about five, five foot across in diameter um, and I took about 90 images of it going around the perimeter um, sort of spiralling up to a, a final top down view um, from above. It only took about five minutes and I used a, a 15 mil fisheye uh, with strobe lights, uh, strobe, you know, with a flash in that instance. Um, and Sketchfab, once you've uploaded the final model, um, allows you to actually annotate it. So you can you can pick out key points that you want to, to tell people about. So that actually worked for something that was quite flat um, and relatively featureless. I felt it um, it worked out quite nicely, as you'll you'll see in a minute. Um, the I'll tell you what. Let's switch to um, the bream nest now. So can everyone see this? Can you see that, Lynn? Yep, that's fine, yeah. Matt. Okay, excellent. So that's worked. Um, so this is the 3D model of the bream nest, um, which you can you can spin around. It's what we call the ramparts, where it, all the excavated material is up around the, the edge. Um, that's probably about eight to ten inches high around the edge of the nest. 
um, and it's it's picked it up really nicely. And you can you can click on these annotations and you know, tell people a bit more about what you're looking at. Um, and, and the like. So it's, it's definitely got a lot of potential here for, for outreach and, in, and engagement. And um, as I think Peter said earlier as well, you know, for, in terms of example biotopes, um, you know, you can label key areas of, of the biotopes. And with enough images and a high powered camera, even on this sort of relatively featureless sand, you really can zoom in to, to quite a lot of, of detail. Sketchfab takes some out of it, but you know there's enough there to recognise that that's a, a painted top shell there on the side of the boulder, um, giving you a sense of scale. There's no eggs on this nest, so we can't see them, but you can see these um, uh, daisy anemones, Thoreus pedunculatus, there sitting on top of the boulders. So you can get a nice, nice lot of detail um, into these models and give people a bit more of an idea of perhaps what it's like been a bream in, it, in its nest. So um, that's the that's the bream model. Um, so that's a you know less than Land Rover size kind of scale as to what we were looking at. But if we go up to something that's this is probably looking at um, four to five Land Rovers plus ribs. Um, this area. This is this is about ten meters by six, and this is a. a wreck of a, a Messerschmitt fighter bomber um, that was found off the Dorset coast um, a couple of years back and we spent a bit of time last summer um, filming it, photographing it, uh, Martin and Sheila researching it um, in order to, to tell its story and um, on one of the dives I literally spent just 10 minutes at the end of the dive just going backwards and forwards methodically across the site taking pictures in a a top-down view um, just to see if it would work really and it, it has worked out you know really quite nicely so it's about 400 images make up the entire site um, a nice crossover between projects all these bear patches in amongst the wreckage they're actually more black bream nests um, so it's, it's sort of you know able to pick up these, uh, these little elements of, of habitat use um, by this other species um, and again, 15 mil fisheye lens, but on this occasion, I just use ambient light with um, manual white balance to uh, to capture the the wreck. Um, so if I if I switch back to Sketchfab and then out from there and bring it up here, it's a really nice platform Sketchfab. It's a bit like Facebook for photogrammetry geeks. Um, but you can you can spin it round and you can have a look. It doesn't look much like a plane, but trust me, it is. That's one engine block here, um, and another engine block there, and then you've got one of its landing wheels, the cockpit area, and some wing spars. Um, the plan is to go back and and redo this in in more detail and capture a bit more of the the reef um, at, at the back end here. But even with with what we've got, you can zoom in to to a surprising amount of detail. Um, as, as John just mentioned, um, photographing from top down, you, you lose um, resolution around the sides. So if we look at this engine block, there's not much detail around the edges because we've just been looking at top down and underneath, um, there's, there's almost nothing there to see because the camera hasn't been able to get underneath those, um, those cylinders. Um, but just zooming into the, the top of it, there is considerably more detail um, than you, you see around the sides. And, and you, you know, even this quick effort, um, try and find it, it's over here somewhere. Yeah, you can zoom right in and you can see, you know, that's a uh, king's gallop there on the seabed. So you really do capture a nice, a nice lot of detail if you use a, um, a high resolution SLR camera on, on these things. Um, but it shows what you know, this is even you know, it's quite a relatively flat site and you can capture a huge amount of, um, of, of detail there um, and, and the sorts of, of habitat it is, the sediment types, um, the some of the species that are living on it. Um, this is, if I zoom in, it's a, a pentapora um, 
Bryce Owen. So you know you can, you can get that idea. You can you can picture yourself on the site, um, on the whole site, much more easily um, than you could just perhaps from a, a single image um, or a video made in poor visibility, perhaps. So you can you can instantly see the whole whole site. But if you want more detail, um, then you can take a look. Let's just pop down to the next slide. So this is that engine block that I told you you couldn't see underneath. Um, but if you go back to that this engine block and you take about 300 images just off this one block alone, then you get an awful lot more detail. Um, so this took me about five minutes to photograph. It's about a metre long, half a metre wide. And again, I used uh, a 15 mil fisheye on this, um, but with video lights this time instead of ambient light and you get a much much higher level of structural detail and an idea of the, the species which um, inhabit it so if we go to the the model of this give it a, a second to load there we are it's got the texture in um, and you can have a really nice close look at this now now someone was asking about scale um, for a few dives i turned into one of those Muppets that does take a long pole with them. Um, this was this was a, a, a half a meter pole, and the the, the software stitched it reasonably well. Um, these are meant to be ten centimeter bands of, of color um, with a, a couple of five centimeter ones mixed in. Um, that's ten, twenty, thirty, forty, and then another five centimetres, I think a three and a two at the end. So it gives you an idea, you know, this is a, a one metre long engine block. Um, and by really focusing in on this, this one area of detail, you can see you've got, um, you know, turf bryzo and something like Scrupa solaria there. Um, you've got um, Decidia fragilis sponge is, is just about recognisable. Um, all of the white stuff, um, growing around around the back here, we've got Salmacina um, or Filigrana and Plexus, the worms, um, and we've got Amphilectus sponge on the top. So you can you can still recognise some species from this, um, and you get that that extra detail. Obviously, bits right underneath the camera hasn't picked up, um, but yeah, you're looking at something. Obviously, less than Land Rover size there, but um, a, a much more detailed view of um, you know subjects underwater. So that could work equally well for you know a boulder habitat, um, or um, perhaps if we were, if the conditions were still enough, we could even be doing this on things like you know pink sea fans and that, that kind of thing. Um, it's all all ideas for the for the future to to try and get. Um, so that gives you. A bit of an idea there about the the measure smith. Um, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Um, and Rocky Reef experiments in the dark. So this didn't work. Um, this this model. Um, this is a, a project in Milford Haven I've been working on for um, the last eight or nine years now, um, monitoring fixed areas of of, of Rocky Reef um, year after year. So we've got. Um, fixed points already. We've got pins in walls with temperature loggers on and, and the like. And um, I was trying this year at the end of a survey just to try and capture one of these sites um, in 3D. But I experimented and well, you've got to experiment, haven't you? Um, uh, to see what works and what doesn't. And I used a, a zoom lens uh, and it just didn't work despite me lighting up the site with strong video lights. Um, and you know really working to try and stay a set distance from the wall and go over it methodically it the software just didn't like it um, this was a vertical wall in about 20 25 meters depth um, quite awkward conditions to work in just floating mid-water trying to keep track of where you are in the dark and um, the software as i said just couldn't couldn't quite handle it but if i i haven't got this one on sketchfab but if i drag agisoft across um, where I've, I've got it stored, it still gives, although, you know, it's sort of lost the rope here and, and, and the like, it still gives an impression of the rugosity of a site. And 
because of the detail we've got, you can still tell exactly what's what's growing there. Um, we've got halochondria sponge, we've got amphilectus, we've got huge lumps of the salmacina or filigrana worms, um, cigarsia, and actinotherian enemies, um, the demnids on there. You, you really get a feel for what this habitat is um, and what you're going to see if, if you go diving there. And I actually sort of wanted to try this on this site this particular year because normally it's completely dominated every year by either amphilectus or halochondria, you know, they're sort of fighting for space. We came back and there was this, you know, this uh, filigree worm just everywhere. Um, and it was really visually noticeable. So even though the model hasn't quite worked, um, it still serves as some kind of visual reference um, as to as to how the site has has changed. And um, if we go back this year, COVID allowing, um, then we should be able to you know, get something at least visually comparable, not um, quantifiably in any in any way, um, because of the poor stitching here. But um, I think it, it shows the potential for what um, what this has got, um, this technique, um, certainly building um, building on this in the future could be could be quite valuable. So I'll move that away. Um, what have we got left on here? Uh, yes. Yeah, so in in twenty twenty one, I want to try and um, do photogrammetry. I say an entire bream nesting site, you know, a much wider area to capture more than one nest in a, in a model. Um, and focus a bit more on, on some other circulatory reefs um, around Dorset um, and try it on some particular benthic species, you know, try and make models of smaller things like pentaporas and sea fans and the like and, uh, and ju just experiment and see, see where, the, um, where the technique takes me. Hopefully um, that's inspired you to get out there and give it a go. Um, that's what John said. So there's a a list of a few web resources to to find out a bit more um, about how it works and what you can do with it and something we could perhaps all aspire to <laughs> if we've got the time this this Thistlegorn project um, and if you have got any other questions about it um, after you've read up a bit more then do feel free to drop me an email. I'll stop there because it is getting late so uh, how do I stop sharing?